Now I'm going to call this video the highest value male the highest value male and the highest value male as in man is a man that knows this truth a man that knows and understands this knowledge this truth a man that the holy spirit is dealing with the holy spirit of yahweh bashim yahshua is dealing with that is the highest value man on the planet okay and that's just the truth and that's the kind of man that will be sought for in these last days that's the kind of man that these women are going to seek for when all hell breaks loose. And uh, what inspired this video was a video I did earlier, which got uh, taken down from YouTube and I got a strike on my channel. So now I have this new channel that I'm broadcasting on. And the video was uh, inspired by this video here, which there's this dude I listen to. He goes by the name of Mumia Obsidian Ali. And he put out a video, what happens to black women when they are unprotected during the time of crisis. I believe that was the title. And basically it was a panel of so-called black men and so-called black women discussing the, the issues circulating uh, the coronavirus and how much fear it's generated. And <laughs> believe you me when I tell you, both men and women are afraid right now of this so-called coronavirus scare and um, the, w the women even more so than the men because by, by nature the women are the weaker vessel and that's clearly written in the scriptures, clearly written in the Bible. So the days are coming as this scare gets uh, bigger and bigger, these women are going to be looking for a man to protect him, protect them. They're going to be looking for a real man for protection. Okay, and uh, the highest value man that, and this is a message to you women, the highest value man that you can get is a Hebrew Israelite man that knows this truth and understands this truth and is uh, blessed with the Holy Spirit. Okay, <laughs> that's the highest value male that you can possibly get. And um, let me just bring out one scripture. This is from the book of Psalms, the first chapter. The book of Psalms, the first chapter, which says this from the first verse. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is that man that walketh not in the, un that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, anything outside of this truth, anything outside of this knowledge is the counsel of the ungodly. All these, all these so-called religions out there, the, what we call Christian plantation religion, that's the counsel of the ungodly. If you believe in the so-called white man as being Jesus Christ, that's the counsel of the ungodly, okay? If you believe that in the American dream, that's the counsel of the ungodly. Like I said, all these religions out there, out there I don't care if you call yourself Baptist, Pentecostal, Jehovah's Witness, you know, Methodist, Islam, that's all, the un that's all the counsel of the ungodly. Okay, as it is written, there's only one truth. Okay, one truth. I believe that's in the book of uh, Ephesians, where it says one faith, one baptism, one truth. Roughly paraphrasing the scripture. Anyway, blessed is the man that walketh not in, in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Heavenly Father. And the laws were given to who? The Hebrew Israelites. The law, the law pursuant to uh, the book of Psalms, the 58th chapter, was given only to the Israelites. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. That is written, you know. So that man's delight is in the law of the Heavenly Father. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And that totally describes us Hebrew Israelites. Because day and night we meditate in the, in the Lord's laws, statutes, and commandments. All right? Day and night we're out there, basically out there teaching. Okay? And if we're not physically out there on the street teaching, our videos are shown day and night. Okay? Day and night. Uh, now, here's the next verse, which is the point. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of, of water 
Now, when you go in the book of John 7 and 38, John 7 and 38, this is what Yahweh Shai said, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shai said this concerning a man that knows this truth, that understands this truth, that is blessed with the Holy Spirit to not only teach the truth, but to comprehend this truth. Well, John 7 and 38 says this, he that believeth on me, and who is this me? Yahweh Shai. Okay, that's his true name in the ancient Hebrew. All right, it's not Jesus Christ, it's not Yehoshua, it's not, it's Yahweh Shai. That is his true biblical, ancient biblical name. That's how you pronounce it. It says, he that believeth on me, and that's according to faith. You know, the pronunciation, the true pronunciation of Yahweh Shai's name is according to faith. Okay? And not every man has faith. That is also written. As a matter of fact, faith is a gift given by the Heavenly Father. That's, that's pursuant to Ephesians 2 and 8. Okay? So it says, He that believeth on me, as the Scripture have said, and we believe the Heavenly Father as the Scripture have said. Okay? We, we, that's why when we teach... Every answer that we give is according to the Holy Scriptures. All right. See, this, this is the what you what you're witnessing is the work of of a, a high value male. Okay, meaning he's he's rooted in these scriptures. Okay, Let's see Psalms the ninety first chapter. Let's read the first verse. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So all this trouble out here, all this anguish will not touch a man of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Okay? A, a potential member of the elect, if you will. Why? Because he dwelleth in where? The secret place of the Most High. What's the secret place of the Most High? Prophecy, these prophecies. Understanding these prophecies. Okay? Which is not given to everybody. Uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, that's the elect, the high-value males, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So what does that mean? The, Al the Almighty will protect them. They'll, no harm will really come to them. And you think the women ain't going to see that? Sure they're going to see that. And they're going to desire to be with a... <laughs> the phone had to chime on that one. They're going to desire to be with a man like that, an individual like that. Okay. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my power. In him will I trust. There you go. And not too many people can actually say that and understand what they're saying and even believe in it. Many people claim they believe in, in the Heavenly Father, but they don't understand, nor do, nor do they know the Heavenly Father. You know, as it is written, the Heavenly Father is searching for the true worshipers. <laughs> Let's get that. <laughs> the true worshipers. There are very few of those. Uh, that would be John 4 and 24. Well, let me start at uh, 22. Uh, John 4 and 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. Because you got a lot of people that claim they believe in God. I believe in God. I go to church every Sunday. Uh, first of all, they don't understand what the word church means. Okay. Which is from the Greek ecclesia, which means called out. You know, you don't, you don't have to go to the building to find, find the Heavenly Father. First of all, you don't find the Heavenly Father. The, the Heavenly Father find you. John, the 15th chapter and the 6th verse. Let's read that. John, John 15 and 16. You don't choose the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father chose you, just like Moses. Moses didn't choose the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father chose Moses. All right? John 15 and 16, these are the words of our Lord. You can clearly see it's in red. His name is Yahweh Shai. This is what he said. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. So the Lord chooses who he wants to serve him. Okay? But I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. What is that fruit? That's a metaphor for other Israelites. The first thing you would teach them is their nationality because our people are lost. That's why we're known as the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Lost to what? Our identity. How did we lose it? Well, we came into slavery underneath the Edomites, which is the so-called white man today. And they took away our nationality. And that's according to Bible prophecy too. So our job is to, when we learn this truth, is to go and 
search for the Lord's elect and bring them back to their nationality. That's what it means, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So that's the, that's the point. We don't choose the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father chooses us. Like, the, like what I'm involved in, I didn't choose it. It chose me. Okay, and I clearly see that today. All right? Because I had other plans. I wanted to be a musician. Okay, I wanted to make music. But that wasn't my calling. And, and by the way, the word calling, that's where you get the word church from. Ecclesia, which means the calling or called. So here it is you talking about you, you go to church every Sunday. First of all, the Lord is not dealing with Sunday. Okay?